Okay, I can do Lily from Detroit, the NBC affiliate there. Thanks for doing this. Good to meet you, Kamala Harris. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your message to Michigan voters in terms of the economy? We have auto workers who are being laid off and those who fear that they might be laid off. The average person can't afford groceries or their rent. And recent polls in Michigan show that Michigan voters believe that Donald Trump would do a better job with handling the economy and bringing jobs back. What do you say to that? Well, let's start with this. I come from the middle class, and I'll never forget where I come from. My mother worked very hard. She, by the time I was a teenager, was able to save up for our first home. And I understand that grocery prices are still too high. I get it. I know your viewers get it. And we need a president who has a plan to actually handle and deal with all this. My plan includes bringing down the cost, the cost of groceries. In particular, I'm going to go after price gouging by these corporations that have been jacking up prices, costing American families and American working people. On the issue of American manufacturing, the United Auto Workers are endorsing me, not my opponent, because they know, one, that under Donald Trump, America lost manufacturing jobs. During the time I've been vice president, we have gained almost 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. And my commitment is to working on American-based manufacturing done by American workers and investing in the industries of the future. My work is about understanding that we've got to bring down the cost of housing, whether it be for renters or homeowners. So part of my plan includes a $25,000 down payment assistance for first-time home buyers. Because I know folks just need a little bit of support to get their foot literally in the door to be able to live the American dream of home ownership, which is about intergenerational wealth creation, bringing down the cost of rent. One of the things that's been going on is corporations buying up a whole lot of property, eliminating the competition, which jacks up rent prices. I will go after that, but also I will invest in working with the private sector builders and developers to create tax incentives and cut through the red tape, work with local government so we can increase the housing supply, bringing down then the cost of rent and the cost of housing in America. My plan is about dealing with the fact that health care is still too expensive. I come from a value that the, the, the access to health care should not be a privilege of those who can afford it. It should be a right for everybody which is why I'm going to make sure that Medicare can continue to negotiate drug prices against the big pharmaceutical companies, which my opponent would not do. And whereas during the time I've been vice president, we've capped the cost of insulin for our seniors at $35 a month, my plan includes ensuring that we bring down prescription medication, including insulin for everyone. So these are some of my plans that are all about, one, being very specifically focused on the needs of working people, but also what will strengthen America's economy, which is why 23 Nobel Prize winning laureate economists have said my plan as compared to Donald Trump's would strengthen America's economy and his would increase inflation and invite a recession by the middle of next year. Next question, Michigan has a large Arab American population, the largest in the country. So we really are feel, feel the effects of what's happening in Gaza. Sure. What would you do to bring lasting peace to that region? The suffering that has taken place um, is unconscionable. In particular, the number of innocent Palestinian civilians that have been killed. We've got to end this war, got to get the hostages out, and work toward a two-state solution. And I will work around the clock as President of the United States to bring all of that to reality. It is achievable, but it's going to take some hard work. It's going to be difficult, but it requires commitment and the commitment that I have. Do you have a message in particular to the Arab American community in Michigan? Well, one, I understand the pain. And it has to be addressed in a way that is about reducing what has been otherwise a, a, a incredibly volatile um, moment in the history of the region that has resulted in, in a, like I said, an unconscionable amount of loss of innocent life. 
I also know the Arab American, first of all, I'm very honored to have the support of American Arab leaders, but I also understand that, that when we are talking about that population as voters, that they're not a monolith, and that there are many issues that they care about and want to address, including what we've just discussed, but also including bringing down the cost of health care, bringing down the cost of housing, bringing down the cost of groceries, investing in communities. I've spent a lot of time throughout the state of Michigan and you deal with something like what we need to do around also an investment in, in the future of our country in a way that everyone has access to clean water and breathing clean air. This is an issue that affects a lot of folks in Michigan. There are many issues that I think the community and that community cares about. Can you tell me about your speech tonight? Sure. So my speech will be at the Ellipse, and the White House will be behind me. And I will be referencing the fact that on January 20th, one of two people is going to occupy the Oval Office. And if it's Donald Trump, I can guarantee you he will be sitting there stewing over his enemies list. And if I am elected President of the United States, I will be there working on behalf of the American people on my to-do list. And I think that's what the American people deserve. Frankly, I believe and I see it as I travel the country, including the state of Michigan. People are exhausted with this era of which Trump has been a leader, which is about dividing the American people, having people point their fingers at each other as Americans. People are tired of of this approach that's about fanning the flame of hatred and fear. And they're ready to turn the page. They want a new way forward. And that is what my presidency offers, which is about bringing the American people together, knowing that the vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. And we need leadership that recognizes that. There is so much good that we can do when leaders apply themselves in a way that is about understanding their strength is not based on who they beat down, it's based on who you lift up. And the significance of why you chose the Ellipse to conduct this speech. Because it is in the White House that the work is going to get done, and I want to help people visualize the place and then think about who you want occupying that place and what kind of work you want to see get done. Do you want it to be about someone who is talking about the enemies within, talking about America's military going after American citizens? Or do you want someone who is there working on challenges, working across the aisle? I'm very proud to have the support of many prominent Republicans who know that we need a President of the United States who takes seriously the oath to defend the Constitution of the United States and to do good work that's about bringing people together. This is kind of like your closing arguments. You're acting like your prosecutor days. Is, is this what the it plan is? It is a closing is? argument. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. And it is uh, my responsibility to make my case to the American people and to hopefully earn their vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the time.